Hi, this is Marcia. And this is Kelly. We are the two U's of Two U's Fiber Adventures. Thanks for stopping by. You'll hear about knitting, spinning, dyeing, crocheting, and just about anything else we can think of as a way to play with string. We blog and post show notes at two U's fiberadventures.com and we invite you to join our two use fiber adventures group on Ravelry. I'm 100 projects and I am better in motion. We're both on Instagram and Ravelry and we look forward to meeting you there. Enjoy, Enjoy the, the episode. episode. Good morning, Kelly. Hi, Marsha. How are you? I'm doing well. Good. I'm sitting. well, not really, but oh. I'm not really. Oh, really? <laughs> well, I'll talk about it when I get to oh, my projects. Oh, that's right. That's my te- my teaser. Yes. But anyway, mm-hmm. I want to hear um, how you're doing because I know you went on a camping trip, I, uh, the first real camping trip in the trailer, not the right, show, but a real right. camping trip. And I want to and I want to hear about it. Oh, okay. Well, we got home yesterday. Um, it was a short trip because I'm. Mm-hmm. Well, by the time I made the reservations, there weren't a lot of sites. Um, you know, the sites that we liked, that we know we liked, mm-hmm. that we were familiar with, because we wanted to make sure that it was an easy trip. Um, mm-hmm. The the sites that we were familiar with were only available until Friday, so we left Tuesday. Um, mm-hmm. Spent Tuesday night and Wednesday night, and then and then came back yesterday. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it was a fun. Quick trip. The weather was gorgeous. Gorgeous weather. Mm -hmm. Um, The campground that we like to go to is called um, Mount Madonna. And it's on what I think what's called Hecker Pass. It's a Mm -hmm. mountain pass through the Santa Cruz Mountains. The the far southern end, I would say, of the Santa Cruz Mountains. um, Mm -hmm. Between Watsonville and Gilroy. Okay. And... And I, the reason I'm making the point about where it is because I have an idea to um, oh, okay. to float um, that we'll probably talk about later on in the podcast. But anyway, the trip was great. The you know getting in and out of our driveway part of it was successful. Um, mm-hmm. We stopped at his work to let people take a look at it, and the guys that he works with were really, you know, I mean it, it's it's kind of like that. Our I don't. I kind of don't get it the same way because to me it's about the camping experience. I mean, I think the trailer is mm-hmm. beautiful, but mm-hmm. I don't have like, you know how when when men, and probably some women too, but but a lot of times you'll see a classic car, and then there's all mm-hmm. these men gathered around the classic car looking at mm-hmm. things that I have no idea mm-hmm. what they're looking at. Like that's kind of the way people are when they look at the trailer, and so. You know, going to his work, he he got a chance to show it off to the people that he used mm-hmm. to work with, and they were super impressed. They had heard a lot about it, you know, because it's been being worked on. It had been being worked on since uh, well, he got in. We got it in December 2020, so you know, it's been a long time coming. Yeah, and they'd heard a lot about it and seen pictures and stuff, so they wanted to see the the finished the finished uh, trailer. So we stopped there on our way up to to mount madonna and um the second day the you know the only full day that we were there my mom and dennis arrived with snacks to Mm -hmm. uh christen the trailer and you know visit with us because they like camping up there too but they weren't able to camp that particular weekend because their trailer needs to go in for some work Mm -hmm. Um, but they did come up and visit and i took the dogs on lots of um lots of trails And sat and spun, basically brought my spinning project that I'll talk about and Mm -hmm. sat in the sun and did some spinning and we ate cheese and crackers when we arrived. So we ended up not having dinner that night. And then my mom and Dennis, they came with snacks the second day. So we had Mm -hmm. snacks and didn't have dinner (laughs) the second day. (laughs) There was very little cooking. We didn't have to do any. Oh. Mm. Um, I made tuna sandwiches because I had I had made some tuna, you know, mm-hmm. some tuna salad was already prepared for the first night and we didn't eat it. So the second night when we were supposed to have barbecued hamburgers, um, after my mom and Dennis left a little while later, we were kind of hungry. So we had tuna sandwiches. And so it was easy in terms of, mm-hmm. you know, we didn't do 
the eggs and potatoes br- or pancakes for breakfast. We didn't do barbecue for dinner. There was mm-hmm. not a whole lot of cleanup because it was mostly <laughs> cheese and crackers and chips and salsa and mm-hmm. you know yogurt for breakfast and so there was lots of time to just sit around and spin and take the dogs for walks and they did really well they uh, it was Barry's first real camping trip and he did mm-hmm. great um, so yeah it was really fun so and then where where you camp at Mount Madonna is it uh, do you plug in to services or yeah. Did you have to bring your own wa- Okay, so you have water have, and electricity, mm-hmm. right? Well, okay. Yeah, they have um they have hookups. They call them partial hookups. It doesn't have sewer hookup. You mm-hmm. you um dump the sewer and gray water, black water and gray water tanks when you leave. There's a, a dump mm-hmm. station where you do that. So we got to do okay. that for the first time cuz we didn't mm-hmm. have um we didn't have that in our old trailer. You know, our gray water just went into a 5 gallon um, a fi- you know, a five gallon, um, it wasn't a bucket, like a jug, you know, mm-hmm. our gray water went into a five gallon jug and we didn't have a bathroom. So there was no black water tank. Mm-hmm. So, okay. um, but yeah, we had electrical hookup and we had, um, water hookup, city water, they mm-hmm. call it. So, so yeah, uh, it, we had all the, all the hookup stuff that we needed today. I'm sitting in the trailer to record, I don't. I probably won't do this a lot because we did get a cover for it, so Robert's going to keep it covered. But mm-hmm. I thought, oh, I'll I'll record in the trailer today. Um, it's beautiful outside. It's actually a little warm in the trailer because Robert had some of the windows closed. But um, it's going to be in the 80s today. Maybe it already is in the oh. 80s. So anyway, oh, I'm nice. sitting at the the trailer table and and I'm testing out the inverter because I've got my phone plugged in. And I've got my computer. This is the first time I've plugged in something more than a phone, which you can charge off of the 12-volt system Mm -hmm. battery. Um, So right now I'm running my computer. It's it's plugged in, and it's being, you know, being powered by the solar. Okay. So pretty cool. Robert's got a small solar power panel that he uses for – what he calls trickle charging when it's um, when it's just sitting in our driveway, so the batteries mm-hmm. don't get overused, but they also don't go dead. Mm-hmm. And then we have the larger solar panel that um, we haven't used in a camping trip yet. We didn't need them because we had power hookup at Mount Madonna. But Mount Madonna yeah. also has tent campsites, and we went around and scoped out the with no services. I mean, they have mm-hmm. um, they have bathrooms, obviously, yeah. and they have water, but you have to go to the place where the faucet is and fill up and mm-hmm. bring it back. Um, and mm-hmm. we went and scoped out those areas to find some of the sites, mark down some of the sites that are long enough for mm-hmm. you know for our trailer and the truck to both be off the off the um, mm-hmm. off the road, off the main road. Mm-hmm. So those campsites, mm-hmm. there were there were a few. That we're going to probably try out if, you know, the main area is full or if we just want to get into a more quiet area. Mm-hmm. So, or just to try it because we haven't. Yeah. You know, we haven't. Because you can go off grid. You don't, you, you're right. self-contained, so to mm-hmm. speak, you know. and Yeah. We don't um, need the electricity or the water. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. It should be really, it should be really fun. Well, and I thought it was really cool too that you know you um, the one thing that you have not f- uh, finished for the trailer is the curtains that are going to go at the window. That's mm-hmm. down the line, right? Um, but the your sort of your stopgap measure is you put up all your vintage um, linens like tablecloths and stuff as sort of temporary curtains. And I thought they were so cute. Yeah, um, I I um, in fact the, I have the one sitting here. I'm going to have to prevail on my more experienced weaver friends um, and some of the people who do more technical work because, and I'll put a picture in the show notes. In fact, I'll text it to you while we're talking maybe. So this one tablecloth, and I think this is one that came from the batch that you gave me when you were going through all of your, 
all of your stuff. Oh, right. But yeah. it's, so it's, it's linen. It's a small tablecloth, a small table tablecloth, but every corner has this really interesting detail. And some of it is actual like cut out and, um, and then bound mm-hmm. or, I guess it's possible that it's not cut out, that just the warp and weft threads are just bound to make pretty good size, like quarter inch square holes. And then some of it is just a nor- the hem stitch, which I haven't ever done. Oh, yeah. Um, but I'd like to try. I think that's not that difficult, and I know I can find instructions for it. And then there's also this other mesh detail that is... I've done some woven lace, but this is actually with thread. You come back after the fact and you use thread to wrap the warp threads and the weft threads mm-hmm. so that you've got these holes. Like it pinches in, it pinches in the warp threads and it pinches in the yeah. weft threads and then you get these little yeah. holes. So anyway, it's very interesting construction. And I'd really, there's not enough. I used it, I used this one tablecloth in one of the windows, Mm -hmm. like folded over. Um, But there's not enough even for that one window. Well, I Mm -hmm. guess, I guess there would be for that one window, but I would like for the two windows that are across from each other in the bedroom to be at least similar. Yeah, yeah. So, and I don't think I want to cut this one up because it's just pretty. But mm-hmm. um, anyway, I'd like to reconstruct this fabric or do some kind of facsimile of this, of this sort of fussy, fussy work. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Weave something and then try that. I think it would be really mm-hmm. kind of a fun challenge mm-hmm. um, for those two bedroom windows. And then the kitchen window... And I'm not sure where it came from. It might have been a piece that I bought somewhere else. It's like a a table runner, but it only has mm-hmm. lace on one lengthwise edge. Mm-hmm. And so, I don't know, maybe like a buffet, you know, something that was against the wall. Mm-hmm. You would put mm-hmm. it on that and it would hang, the lace part would hang over the front. Um, and I, I just sewed a little sleeve for the, um, for the curtain rod and used it as a kitchen the kitchen window has two crocheted lace panels that are Mm -hmm. sewn between linen fabric. And it's really cute. It's a bit too long. And I think what I'm going to do, um, I didn't, uh, all I did was put a sleeve in the top of it for the rod. So it's just one panel, one piece going across the whole window. And I think I can't decide whether I want to do it as a valance and, you know, just have one piece going across the top of the window as a valance, or if I want to cut it down the center and be able to split them mm-hmm. for the kitchen window. But I think that one will stay. I think that one, in some form, not the form it's in now, but in some form, that one is going to stay okay. um, in in that kitchen window because it is really cute. And, and that... It's, it's the perfect size, whether I, you know, make it into a valance or split it down the middle. Um, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's really the perfect size. So that one will stay. And then the other one that I thought was really funny, <laughs> there's a dresser scarf. And I think the dresser scarf also came from the stuff that you gave me. Okay. Um, and one edge of it has crocheted lace that says mother. Mm. And so I hung it up mm. in the window with the <laughs> with the, the side that said mother, you know, facing into mm-hmm. the into the bedroom. And my mom was laughing. She's like, I'm not sure you want your mother in the bedroom. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> but you can't get into too much trouble on that bed, Kelly. <laughs> right. <laughs> With the word mother right over your head. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> it, it, it was really, um, it was, it's a really cute piece. And it has plain lace on the other side. So the outside of the window had mm. the plain lace showing. And the inside of the window had the lace that, that, that it's said, cute. that had the, the word mother on it. So very fun. And then I mm-hmm. used one of my, um, I wanted to cover the front window. Well, really, I wanted to keep the curtain rod from falling out. 
Mm -hmm. And so I put an, another vintage tablecloth that I had with flowers on it um, in the, the front window hanging up, you know, a floral mm -hmm. one. And then we just used that one on the table uh, while mm -hmm. we were, you know, while we were there. So, yeah. Yeah. We had a really, uh, a really good time. So the mm -hmm. thing, Bailey's barking in the background because the mailman just mm -hmm. came. Um, the thing that I was thinking as we were there, because they do have the tent sites and um, they also have yurts for people who didn't mm. typically do camping. But I was thinking it would be fun to have a little camping meetup. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and um, we could provide... Again, for people who didn't necessarily do camping or have camping equipment, um, you know, we could do, you know, here at the, at the trailer, we could do coffee mm -hmm. in the morning so people have their coffee and then we could do dinners, um, you know, barbecue dinners. And so mm -hmm. people what, who didn't camp typically could, you know, still eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really? wouldn't need to worry about you know wouldn't need to worry about bringing a camp stove or mm -hmm. or that kind of stuff you you could get by with minimal equipment you know yeah that's what i was yeah. thinking you, yeah. if, you, if you wanted a yurt you yeah. could rent one of the yurts or you mm. know get one of the tent sites or if you have an rv bring an rv so you know i don't know how many people that would actually turn out to be probably not very many but i thought mm -hmm. oh that might be kind of a fun thing to to look into yeah. so yeah well we'll think about that yeah yeah I really enjoy that uh, that campground mm -hmm. because it's very close to our house and mm -hmm. and it you know it's in the it's in the woods but it's mm -hmm. not like the wilderness and then on our way we'll get off the um, the the camping thing but on our way to black sheep <laughs> gathering we're gonna stay at a couple of harvest host sites mm -hmm. um, Kelly that we met at stitches had recommended harvest host. And I looked into it and decided to get a membership. So we're going to be staying at two places. One is a rice farm mm -hmm. on the way up. And the other one is a winery. So okay. I'll have to report back on how that, how that goes, but that should be fun. Yeah. That'll be a first. I've never yeah. done that kind of camping where you just pull up yeah. at somebody's business, <laughs> <laughs> park in yeah. their parking lot. So, huh. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Yeah, yeah. Have fun. I'll definitely report back. So, yeah. Well, I remember Kelly talking about it. Was really excited about it. She said it was just really, really fun. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, it's yeah, perfect I'm for a trip um, where you know where you're on the go because it's a one night. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a one night experience. You don't stay there mm -hmm. multiple nights, and that's not something that we've done a lot of either. You yeah. know, the trip up to Black Sheep is probably the one of the those that's one of the only types of trips where we've done the camp one night pack up and go mm -hmm. kind of yeah. camping we yeah. usually wherever we're staying we stay a little longer than that even if we're yeah. moving on you know yeah well i'm excited because i'll see you at the end of this month just a uh, two weeks i think i think or so i'll see it yeah so. yeah anyway okay it, it, should we move on I don't want to cut this off because it's super interesting and fun, but I don't. <laughs> Should I move on? <laughs> yes. Should we move on to our next topic? Yes, let's move on to our next topic. There was some okay. fiber content in there, though, I have to say, because I did talk yeah, about yeah, no. <laughs> lace curtains and possible weaving. Uh, yeah, no, it, yeah, it is. Well, I think the trailer is just, it's, it's just fun. Yeah, you know? yeah. It is just super fun. So, okay, so uh, before we get to projects, um, we just want to mention that Jeweled Designs coupon code for 15% off any of their products is still available. It's still going on. And uh, just go to Jewel Designs uh, website. There's a link in the show notes and just use the coupon code to use. And that's all caps. Mm -hmm. And um, so check that out. Did you buy your anything? I have yet? not yet. I keep I keep okay. thinking I need to go in there and do it, and I haven't done it. But I, I was looking there today as I was putting my stuff in the show notes, and um, I found a couple of things that I like. So I'm going to do that before we mm -hmm. uh, before I put the computer away today. And then mm -hmm. also I noticed that she has a blog post series on um, Laura Bellows, who has Jewel Design. She's uh, 
an anthropologist, I think. And anyway, she has a this blog post series on wearing a Balinese sarong. And I I okay. I saw the title and I saw the pictures and I bookmarked it because I want to go back and and read it. It looks like it's like three yeah. three or four posts um, mm-hmm. on the different aspects of of that. And I thought, oh, that's very interesting. Because again, fabric, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, fabric. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Mm-hmm. So yeah, take a look at her her blog posts and take a look at her um, all of her different shawl pins and shawl collars and mm-hmm. clo- different closures and and such. And a thank you to her for providing this uh, coupon yeah. code for our, for our listeners. Yeah. Well, and speaking of thanks, Marsha, we have mm-hmm. another thank you to do. Yes, our um, our patrons from Patreon. Uh, we just want to want to give them all a shout out because we're so appreciative. These patrons uh, provide the funding that supports the prizes. Um, They support the podcast hosting, um, all of our community events, you know, the, the alongs that we do. Um, We are able to have prizes, you know, in the, in the abundance that we do because of the support of our patrons. So we wanted to, we wanted to thank them and, our most recent um, patrons are, uh, so thank you to them, uh, Christina Y, Kelly B, Lori M, Francesca Q, and Shelly M. They've all joined Patreon um, and become patrons in 2022. And then we also mm-hmm. have Pamela R, Connie L, Cheryl C, Jan H, Hetty C, Jane H, Colleen G and Mindy C, thank you for your sponsorship of our podcast. Okay. And we also have Iman, Amy L, Patty B, Joan B, Tammy S, Kathy M, Natalie, Martha P, Melody W, Joanne Y, Greta H. Okay, and also thank you to Joy Lane O, Barbara G, Rachel W, Joyce G, Angela D, Lori L, Charlene, Erica N. And a thank you also to Debbie F, Erica J, Rachel S, Patricia E, Catherine K, Karen B, Jen N and Janet S. Thank you, everyone. Yes, thank you. We really appreciate your support. And the other uh, members of our community also appreciate your support because, again, it allows us to do the kind of, um, uh, the kind of events and alongs and prizes. Oh, and I see, I just scroll down to the next page. Angie, um, is also a patron. Thank you, Angie. She's been a patron for quite a while. Uh, and she oh, was I'm on sorry. the second I page. <laughs> she was on the I'm second sorry. page. I, I didn't scroll down <laughs> far enough. So sorry, Angie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, with that said, um, what about your projects, Marsha? We'll go from an up note <laughs> to maybe a well, low note. Oh, yes. So here's what I have to say about both my projects. The first one, so I'm going to talk first about the sweater I'm making for my son. And I'm using my hand spun. And have you ever heard, Kelly, of the law of attraction? That you say you tell you say something out to the universe mm-hmm. and the universe gives it back to you. Mm-hmm. You have to be careful what you say because oh, no. <laughs> it can give you positive things. It can give you negative things. And so I'm sort of laughing be- about this because one of the things I kept saying is how much I enjoy knitting with my hand spun. <laughs> well, the universe has given me the gift of knitting the sweater for the third time. Oh, God. <laughs> So I will just back up and just say, so bottom line, I'm taking the sweater and I'm setting it aside for a while. Mm -hmm. And just a a note too about my brother's sweater. I'm kind of setting that aside for a little bit too. So the sweater I'm making for my brother, or excuse me, for Ben, um, this is the, um, do you remember, not to rehash this whole thing, but first (laughs) I started making um, the Mm Franco.com sweater. 
that didn't work out because of my gauge. So I now started doing the Unpattern by Karen Alfke. And um, this is the Raglan pullover from the top down where you actually just take your measurements. And basically, it's the same idea of um, what... Frank Jernigan is doing or Amy Herzog used to do where you it's like a you know the computer does the math in this case I'm doing the math but we talked about this in the last episode um, about the pattern uh, when you get to the part where you're um, you're increasing for the sleeves and the body there's an error in the pattern I'm calling it an error somebody else may not say it's an error but when you're figuring out how many stitches to have on the arm and have for the body, it says you you do your math and times the gauge, you know, whatever, equals, and then it says front or back goal stitches, 176. Yeah. And I kept knitting beyond, or I, I kept knitting because it said front and back. No, it said front or back. Uh, it said front or back. I read that as yes. I needed 176 stitches on both the front and the back. Right. Each, right. Mm-hmm. 176 each. stitches each, yes. Each for the front, 176 stitches for the back. Right. What it really should be, is, instead of saying front or back goal stitches, it should say front and back. Right. So I need a total for the whole body, yes. front and back, combined of 176. I have, because we caught this when I was down there for... When I was down in California at your house uh, going to... Um, Stitches or knockers? Uh, oh, knockers. Okay. I believe it was knockers. Mm-hmm. And you said we decided we we added up my stitches and I have 224. Right. And we caught it because you were so far down. It was like you had you still weren't ready to split for the... Split the arms off of the body... But you were right. far enough down that it looked like you should be splitting the arms off the body. If I continue to the point where I should split, the armholes would be at the waist. <laughs> right. Almost. And, That's an yeah. exaggeration. Well, but that Way was our clue, big. right? That was the clue. That was our clue. We and then you caught. And said, wait a minute. If, if I keep going, this is going to be way too long of the right. armholes. And, and then, then we started looking at the pattern. And right. Realized, and you caught, mm-hmm. yeah, you caught the, air, the mistake in the pattern. So... But we had that conversation. You know that moment? Mm -hmm. And you have this conversation, and we convinced each other that I should just stop and keep going. Right. Because you had, how many stitches did you have on each? I had 224. Total. Total for the body combined. And if I had continued, what's two times 176? It's a... Well, 240, no. 100, 252? No, it's, it's, more than, it's more than 300. Oh, it's 300. Three, yeah, that's right, 300. So, um, so you, you, had, just, you said... So you were supposed to have 176 all the way around, and you had 224. Yes. 24 all the way. So you had essentially you had about 50 extra stitches. Yes. How did we convince and ourselves that that was okay? Well, and this is what I'm going to – so this is what I'm going to – so we – to finish it, we convinced – we had this conversation. You're like, you said, I think it's going to be okay. Do it's going to be to rip it back. Than planned. Yeah. How far would you have but, yes, to rip but it it'll back be okay. to back to the, nor- the number of stitches you right. need? Oh, that's too far to rip back. That, you know – oh, that would be an unpleasant number of rows to rip back. So, mm-hmm. Yes. I should have just ripped back then mm-hmm. because I knit the entire body. Right. And half of the first sleeve by the time he came home and I tried it on him. Yeah. And it's way too big. Yeah. Well, and way too to big. be fair and, to you, he gave mm-hmm. you a sweater that he liked as a template mm-hmm. and holding the sweater you were knitting up to the sweater that he liked as a template. Mm hmm. They looked about the same size. Yeah. But the sweater that he liked as a template is alpaca and drapey and thinner. Mm-hmm. Machine knit. Yes, fine, and it's, and it's uh, fine yarn uh, alpaca. It, and it's also that style where it's basically, you know, the body is a square. Right. And then the, the and then the, uh, yeah, and then the arms just stick off of that. Mm-hmm. So 
Here's my the moral of the story. Yeah. When you have that feeling and you know what you sh- you should just do it then. Yes. You should when not- you have that feeling and you say, "Oh, I oh gosh. Ripping all of that out. I really don't want to do that. I think it'll be okay." That that phrase, "I think it'll mm-hmm. be okay," should be a trigger. It won't be okay. <laughs> you need to rip it out. Yeah. Ugh, I'm so sorry. So I know. So I ha- he tried it on, I don't know, now it's two weeks ago or so when he was here. Yeah, right after and our last episode, I think. Yeah, it was Memorial Day weekend, yeah. I think. You know what? I don't remember because I was so upset <laughs> <laughs> that I sort of had to go to bed. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I, but I did. I had that feeling like, that feeling like I'm going to cry. Yeah. I feel like I'm going to cry and I think I should go get in bed and cry but no i'm a i'm a i'm a grown woman mm-hmm. and i'm going to now go out and take the dog for a walk or do something else and i'm just going to set it aside and not think about it for a while yeah. and then i have to just i it was and i was very angry at karen alfke <laughs> <laughs> and it's not her fault because well i don't know if it no i can't blame her but it's just the way the pattern's written it's not yeah. It is not clear. It's a mistake in the pattern, and I didn't catch it. You, you know, like, yeah, you have to actually um, be thinking. I mean, mm-hmm. you have because I just couldn't figure out how you could have gone gone so wrong, right, from the pattern, and then so then I took the number of stitches that were supposed to be what I thought just the front, and divided mm-hmm. by your gauge to see how many inches mm-hmm. that was supposed to be, and realized it was the forty inch circumference that you needed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like okay, well, hmm. If it's not an error, it's at least a place where things are unclear enough that it should mm-hmm. be changed. Yeah. But so um, Karen Alfke lives in the Pacific Northwest, and I know she's a friend of my friend Kim. And so if I ever see her, I promise I will be nice to her. <laughs> <laughs> you won't, your, your, your mad won't last too long. You'll, you'll it won't last. And, and honestly, the truth is, once I rip the sweater out. Yeah. For the second time, yeah, and re knit it for the third time. Karen, if you're listening, Marshall will be mm-hmm. okay. <laughs> I promise I'll be kind. But um, and and as as I say, once I I rip it back and start over again, mm-hmm. I now it's really clear what my mistake is. Um, okay, I'm crossing my. You can't see me, but I'm crossing my fingers, Kelly. Okay. Um, hopefully I'll be okay, and I won't have to knit it again. Yeah. Um, Knock on wood right now. So. Yeah, knock. <laughs> Everybody out there, knock on wood for Marsha. It's funny because I was reading the um, our posts um, uh, in on Ravelry in the discussion thread, like when we post the episode, and then people make comments, and I don't remember now who it was. I'm drawing, but, uh, someone said, "Oh, I'm so sorry that Marsha was having these problems that I talked about in the last episode with the my brother's sweater," mm-hmm. and I was laughing. I thought, "You don't know the half of it," <laughs> because yeah. I've been, yeah. Anyway, um, I will have the joy of knitting with uh, my hand spun a third time. <laughs> it's a good um, thing you like that yarn. <laughs> yeah, really. But I'm not going to say that anymore because um, it got me into big trouble, I yeah, think. Um, yeah, so true. anyway. Okay. So now moving on to my other sweater that's a problem. And uh, this is the uh, sweater with round pattern or Kelly, how are you pronouncing it? Well, we have a pronunciation audio from Kat, and it yes. actually isn't sweater with round pattern. It's, well, she'll... We'll play it. And so we'll put the audio in right here. Yeah. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Marsha. I believe it's Trotja v. Minstor. Um, Trotja sweater v. with Minstor's pattern. Um, and I looked it up in the Fairies Dictionary, and I'll send it to you. Minstor just means any pattern, not necessarily a round pattern. It could also mean a pattern for for weaving, for embroidery, uh, depending on the context. In this case, it would be a pattern for knitting. Okay, so Kat, thank you for that. Yes. That really helps us out. Okay, (laughs) what's going on with that sweater? I have, uh, as you know now, this is the second time I've, I mean, I switched to this pattern. I've knit the body up. This is a bottom up, so I've knit up to the body, up to the armholes. I've set that aside and started the sleeves. Right. And you've blocked uh, it, washed it and blocked it and checked that it actually yes. fits. 
Yes. Yeah. And so I did it halfway through. So that's why the pictures of it in Ravelry, there's this weird line. Um, okay. Body set aside. Um, I started the first sleeve. Didn't like it because I, um, what, oh, let me back up. The sleeve you're supposed to cast on and knit the cuff. Then you do some color work in stockinette right above the cuff. And then you knit in the main color up to the armhole. Set that aside. Do the same thing with the second sleeve. Then attach the sleeves to the body and knit the yoke. My concern about that is once that's done, you cannot adjust the length of the sleeves. Without the ripping everything out. <laughs> without having to rip out the yoke. Yeah. yeah. So I, what I decided to do is a provisional cast on with one row of the, the, one of the contra, the color work, the, the cuffs are supposed to be in the navy blue. So I decided to do one row of the navy blue and then start the color work. And that was a disaster because you're doing it, you know, magic loop. Uh, and it, the tension was terrible. It was all over the place. And you have no so base I, to hold on to while you're doing right. that color work. Yeah. Right. So I ripped that out. I cast on again, provisional cast on. I did three rows of stockinette in the blue, the navy blue, um, which is going to be the cuff color because I thought, what well, will ha And then I knit the color work and I did about an inch of the main color and I realized I don't like the color work because. The everything is knit on size eight, but what I've decided to do with the yoke is I'm gonna knit that on nines. And I forgot to switch to nines for the color work oh. on the sleeve. <laughs> so I ripped it out back to the it was not as horrible, but I had to rip it back out to the um the three rows of the navy of the stockinette. Um and then I re-knit the color work on nines. And then I switched back to eights and I've done most of the sleeve. I would say it's three quarters done. Mm -hmm. And I thought it feels a little tight. Oh no. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen, but I decided I'm putting it on waste yarn and I washed and blocked it. Um, so I did that uh, yesterday. So it's sitting there drawing. Um, and so I, I just want to make sure. Yeah. I don't want to finish that sleeve and do the second sleeve and not have the, and have them too tight. Right. So, oh my gosh. All well, I can say is, what the hell? <laughs> 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 it It is uh, I hate I hate these projects. I hate these projects. Yeah. So, <laughs> to to help myself, I uh, so Ben's sweater is being set aside for a while. My brother's sweater is going to be set aside for a while. I just need to take a break from it. Um, and anyway, I decided to cast on something else. So, Kelly, guess what I cast on? Something for you. This, something for me. And just the name alone is going to make me happy. <laughs> it's called Happiness. Yes. And the designer is Kyle Konecki. And I'm using the big, giant baby that I bought <laughs> at Stitches. Yarn Snobs Powerball. Yeah. And it nice. has all these colors in it. It's so it's interesting. I will post pictures too. It weighs this skein of yarn weighs 500 grams. It's 2,187 yards. And it was a bit of a challenge to get it onto the, um, the Swift. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then I wound it into three cakes. And what I did is, uh, because if you if you break it, it and it well first of all I have to say this amazing yarn I'm kind of curious how he's able to get 500 grams and over 2,000 yarns with not a single break in it. There's no knots mm -hmm. in it at all. It's a it's a continuous um, piece of yarn. Um, I don't know how he dyes it so beautifully, given that it's so thick. I mean, he's got the color goes all the way through. It's yeah. amazing how it, it, and it's clearly when you open it up into the hang. It's, it's, that's how it was dyed. It was not dyed in another form and then wound into that hank. You know, right, it's, you can right. see it's been dyed in that hank. Yeah, it so, was not reskained. No. Yeah. Um, what anyway, so what I did that is, would be to reskein it. Yes. Yeah. Hard enough to skein <laughs> it in the first place before you dye it. <laughs> so what I did is, but I wanted to, keep, I, it may not be important to keep the color order given the way this thing is sort of this very, very, 
crazy chaotic color. You know, it may not be necessary. I to keep think it, it's but necessary. I, well, I wanted to keep the color order. So what I did is I wound it into three balls, but I put a piece of uh, tape like painter's tape mm-hmm. on the be- the beginning of the yarn. When as I as I started taking it off the swift, I put it and I labeled that one, mm-hmm. and I put and so the end one now is on the inside of my cake, and end two is on the outside of my cake, mm-hmm. right? So then I I break that and then I put a tape on the next the piece that's coming off of the swift. That's three. That's now wound on that's on the inside of my cake Mm -hmm. and four is on the outside of my cake. And then the third one and five is on the inside and and six is on the outside. I like to pull from the outside. So I can't pull from the outside of the first cake one that it's labeled one and two because two is on the outside. So I'm starting at the very end. Mm -hmm. So I'm starting with the third cake, which is, and starting with six, mm-hmm. which then five will be in the center. Then I'll go to to uh, four, which is on the outside. Three is on the inside. And then the last cake, two is on the outside and one is on the inside. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. And that's, I think, going to be really important because the cakes of yarn actually look very different. It's true. And uh, the f- the first one I wound off and the last one I wound off look the most similar. The one that's right in the middle mm-hmm. is darker. Mm-hmm. It has more black in it. Mm-hmm. So I think um, I think it is important to keep the yeah. that order. Because that way you um, don't have to alternate skeins. It'll just go in the along the patterning of the skein. Mm-hmm. And Whatever the differences are, will they will change naturally the way the mm-hmm. skein changed as opposed to abruptly Yeah, if you weren't um, going in that order. So I think that's a smart way to do it, Marsha. Yeah. So I already uh, just knitting on it. I'm so much happier. It's on size four. Um, so it's a nice, it's a smaller needle than um, because the other thing I need to mention that I did finish my a uh, garter squish blanket over Memorial Day weekend, Yay. the deadline to finish it was May 31st. And I believe I finished it on May 30th with a day to spare, but that was <laughs> knit on 13s. And that's like, it really feels, you can't really get a rhythm knitting with those because yeah. um, they're so big. So um, I'm very happy with this so far. And I'm, I've just knit, let's see, I'm knitting on it now and I have to do two inches of ribbing and then I'll switch to stockinette. Um, and so I, this is what I'm planning to bring to black sheep gathering at the end of the month. So I can just knit mindlessly on it and talk to people and not look at those other two sweaters. <laughs> I think that's a really good plan. And the thing about this one is that it's a nice um, kind of boxy sweater with mm-hmm. a lot of positive ease. So mm-hmm. that's a lot of stitches. Mm hmm going around and around in stockinette so it'll be it'll be perfect knitting for a long time yeah and i think everybody probably has the size needle that they feel the most comfortable with Mm -hmm. or the range of needle size that they feel the most comfortable with i really like my sock needles at the low end Mm -hmm. and then i like threes like threes fours that's a twos threes fours that's a really nice size for me it feels Mm -hmm. they feel right in my hand where when i'm knitting Mm -hmm. with five fives or sixes for a hat it's not that i don't enjoy it but it's always nice to get back to my little needles yeah yeah so that's that'll be good too it's it's right in your your comfort knitting zone right Mm -hmm. yeah yeah well that's good I'm excited about it. I think it'll be I think it'll be a good project for you. It sounds like you're excited about it. The colors are great. Mm-hmm. And then I have been spinning on the my Manx Lawton Lockton. I've been spinning on that and I'm planning on bringing my wheel and that to Black Sheep Gathering and mostly spinning, mm-hmm. I think. Um I'm oh, good. That's it. And then as I say, finished project, I finished my garter squish. That's my only finished project. Yeah, and it turned we'll out really about. nice. Yeah, how, it's nice. How do you have you put it next to your other two to like yes. see how it compares and what what you like? 
like how how um, do you like them compared to one another or are there like this is the first one that you've done with flat colors no it's the second one. Oh, the second one that's right um, the first one so you did was the, also was the cascade yeah the first one was flat the main color was like a blue mm-hmm. like a i don't know what color blue you would call that um, um i i not quite kind of between a, a navy kind of a darker royal blue not yeah. not so bright as a royal blue, but not so dark yeah. as a navy. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then this one, uh, and it had brighter colors, more not really natural colors mm-hmm. in it. The contrasting one, I don't. And I'm not saying that the, the so then the and then the second one I did is when we dyed all the yarn. Yeah. So we had the gradient and then all the painted yarn variegated. Yeah, uh, variegated. I like. Uh, and then the this one that I just completed the background is a brown. Then all the colors are like sage and orange and mm-hmm. I don't know. It looks more like the first one. Uh, yeah. And ironically, I what I really would like to do is I would like to do one where the the um, the main color is just a cream or a natural color like yours. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what I. But I I but I found that's what I wanted to do. But you know, I had all that yarn. The first one it was using up the yarn from my dad's sweater. Mm-hmm. And then, um, yeah, and I, I mean, and the one that I just finished, I had a lot of just undyed yarn, and I dyed it because I, um, well, because oh, you know what, the was solid just, was the brown. It's like you've always had a different well, solid. Yes, but actually, now I'm kind of thinking I could have. Well, no, that really would because even the natural color yarns were all slightly different. I didn't have a cons. I was thinking what I could have done is just reversed it, and mm. the one. The yarn that was sort of the no, I did it the right way because the yarn that I dyed for the background was all kind of a uh, camel colored. Right. It wasn't natural. Yeah. 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 So anyway, uh, well, you'll have to put a fourth one uh, on your I needles. Cannot that's, do that's another one. <laughs> no, you know what you should do. Um, what you, the next one you do? Because I think mm. there will be another one in your future at some point, not in the near future. Oh yeah, there I'm will sure be. there will be another one. Is do that one that is um, this like I think it's called the sediment throw, where you go corner to corner. Yes, um, I I, th- I was thinking fun. about that, and then um, the other one I'm thinking of is um, there's the one for my brother that he wants. Yeah, which it, was, you're which not doing any started... more projects for other people for a while. I'm no, gonna, I'm gonna just I know. lay down that law for you, Marsha. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um. But the one I really want to make, and I'm I'm sorry, I'm I should have been because I didn't know we were going to be talking about this That's in right. depth. Um, let me look at. Uh, well, a lot of people did the habitation throw. Mm-hmm. But it's and I'm looking for the one that I because uh, I've been pulling out yarn for it. Um, anyway, there's the one for my brother, mm-hmm. and that's all with the um, um, Noro, mm-hmm. and I don't really have I don't have any Noro, so I have to figure that one out. Um, I'm sc- scrolling through my patterns. Oh, I can't find it. it. But anyway, basically, it's like uh, chevrons. Kind of, you just use oh yeah uh, mm-hmm. sock weight yarn mm-hmm. that you and um. So that's when I was sort of thinking of using that. And I was actually thinking because I have so much sock weight yarn, like scraps, but I also have a lot of sock weight yarn that I that, you know like I bought single skeins right that I don't really like them. Mm-hmm. I don't want to shawl out them. I don't want to make socks. I was thinking I would put that all into the blanket, but I have, you're supposed to use about 500 grams uh, to make the blanket. Total, total to make the blanket. I was sort of thinking maybe what I would do is um, hold the sock weight yarns double and go up in needle size. Um, And so I could use up some of those one-off skeins that I don't really like very Mm -hmm. much. Um, So anyway... No, I think it's a perfect, sol- the holding yarn double is a perfect solution to using the partial sk- or, well, partial skeins that are left over, but also full skeins of, of yarn that you bought that you don't need another pair of socks or you just mm-hmm. aren't in love with it anymore. Yeah. I'm hoping I get my juju back. Well, focus on your sweater first because that is, I, I think that is just such a fun pattern. That, mm-hmm. I mean, the the sweater is cute. The yarn is great. Um, it's comfortable knitting because you just start doing stocking it around and around mm-hmm. until you're sick of it. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. So I think I have these, you know, my brother's sweater and Ben's sweater are sitting in my bedroom in their project bags. I think I'm going to go put them in the closet. So I, can't I think you should. Yes. Put them away where you don't have to look at them and feel any kind of guilt yeah. or. Yeah. Anyway. So let's go into more positive things. Uh, we'll finish my projects and we'll go into your projects. Okay. Well, uh, there's not much to say. <laughs> <laughs> so this will be short. Um, I'm making a pair of shorty socks and mm-hmm. I'm using a hand spun yarn that I've, um, that I've actually used before for socks. It's out of a fiber. It was Falkland, which it's not as soft as I would expect so- uh, Falkland to be, but there's not, you know, it's not horrible. Just when people talk about Falkland, a lot of times they talk about how soft mm-hmm. it is. But anyway, it's um, tomato and mink or mink and tomato was the colorway. Mm-hmm. I don't now remember where I got it, but it was a number of years ago, maybe 2013, 14, something like that. And I spun it up and last summer or the summer before I made a pair of regular socks out of it. And mm-hmm. I had spun it for socks. I made a a three ply, so it's long color repeats. It's a chain ply. One thing I I will comment about chain ply because there was a little bit of discussion of, about it on the um, Ravelry group this morning. Um, one thing about chain ply, it definitely magnifies your inconsistencies. So I have some places where. This yarn is super, super thin, like a lace weight. It's mm-hmm. a three ply, but super, super thin because my fiber got thin, and then you're putting the three thin, le- three thin fibers together mm-hmm. when you do the thi- the chain ply. So it's thin, yeah. and then in the thicker area, you know, because when you're chain plying, you're plying areas that are close together. I'm plying three, th- three thicker strands, and then I've got a mm-hmm. thicker yarn, so it's more like a mm-hmm. sport. So this mm-hmm. yarn varies from a really thin uh, lace weight to a, about a sport weight, um, which is fine. It makes a nice sock. It's not, you know, it's honestly, this is one of the things I try to uh, tell people is that those kinds of inconsistencies, you think they look big in the skein or mm-hmm. in the yarn, but once you knit with them, even in stockinette, I'm really not seeing that kind of inconsistency in my knitting. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't show. The other thing about the chain ply is you have a tendency to overspin it because Mm. your feet, you need, you really need, as your hands slow down, if you get, you know, stuck or you Mm -hmm. you miss the chain or you just need a little extra time and you don't also slow down your feet, you get it overspun, overplied. And this mm-hmm. yarn is pretty overplied. I mean, it's like kinking on itself as I'm trying to knit with it. And, you know, it's been washed. And a lot of times when you wash an overplied yarn, it does relax quite a bit. But this, mm-hmm. I'm a lot of times having to, un, you know, pull it, pull out the kinks as I'm the places where it's yeah. pigtailed onto itself. Um, that's really good. And I did it on purpose. Well, it's a, it's a good feature to have for a sock yarn because it makes the sock yarn more durable. Mm -hmm. Um, but it is a little bit annoying to knit with Um, Mm -hmm. and it is a feature of chain plying if you're not really careful you can get Mm -hmm. you know things over you can get things over plied when you don't Uh, actually mean for them to be but these are just a pair of shorty socks and they're not going to match because they're with the leftover ball and these are Mm -hmm. uh, so one of them has a gray cuff the other one has a gray and orange striped cuff and then half the foot is gray and other half the foot is orange and this one i've got a gray cuff and an orange part of the foot and then i have only gray left so it'll only have one orange stripe where the other one has i think two or three places on it that that's orange so these are really long pattern repeats which again is a another one of those uh, features of chain ply is that you can Mm -hmm. get those um long or not pattern repeat but color you know long stretches Mm -hmm. of color so they're self-striping, but the stripes are about four inches in some places. Yeah. So that's my socks. And then I have a new spinning project. So I'm using up the remainder of the Columbia fleece. I had been using the Columbia and the Oxford. Um, spinning those up. I spun those all. I had spun those 
in the past two summers and then used them for my garter squish. And then mm-hmm. I, I had used up all of the Oxford in the final part of my garter squish. And so then I started with the rest of the Columbia fleece and I, I uh, carded it and I added in Tussa silk. So okay. I have this Tussa silk top. I had bought like a pound of it or eight ounces of it or something a long time ago. It was in my stash. So I got it out and I just, you know, blended that in as I was carding and it is nice. This is this fiber is really nice. I have these bats and you can see like I blended the silk. I tried to blend the silk pretty well, but there are places where you've got like this strand of like silk fiber running through it. That's just mm-hmm. super pretty and fun to spin. There's a lot of silk content. I tried to get 50-50, but I couldn't. I only wanted to do three passes through the carter and I couldn't get 50% silk into the fiber in just mm-hmm. three passes. So mm-hmm. that's all right. I, it has, it has enough silk in it. It's going to be really nice and it's spinning up pretty mm-hmm. thin. So mm-hmm. I'm probably going to make it into a three ply, but I don't know. I might two ply it mm-hmm. um, and, and use it for, I don't know, shawl or something. I'm not sure how much I'll have when I get, when I get done. Yeah. And I think yeah. in this case, I am going to spin all the singles first and then mm-hmm. decide if I want to, do I want a two ply or do I want a three ply? How much yarn, how much yeah. of this yarn do I want? And then I think yeah. I'll also dye it after the spinning is finished. Cause that'll be interesting. Cause the dye will take differently on the silk and the, mm-hmm. and the wool. So, mm-hmm. so then, yeah. yeah. Interesting. And I cleaned up my wheel, took it all apart, washed it, oiled it well washed it polished it put it back together oiled it it's spinning so nicely so i have a question i don't see your mohair sweater on here no that's put away for a little while it's been kind of warm Uh, Um, i haven't knit on it since the i think i was knitting on it at the last episode when we recorded Mm -hmm. and it's still sitting up in the in the guest room vanity area <clears throat> from that day. I haven't touched it since then. I got really into the carding. That was the mm-hmm. main thing. And then these socks were just something that I started at the Pismo rally trip to have something to knit in the car. And then I brought them with mm-hmm. me um, in the car to this, you know, on this trip. But I haven't made a whole lot of progress on them. Well, I have a comment about it. Um, when I was uh, walking Enzo and listening to the last episode, mm-hmm. Um, you were talking about the sweater and how you had had that sweater in the '60s, oh, uh-huh. that you re- the mohair sweater that you bought in the boys' department. Yeah, and I'm walking along, and I all of a sudden I thought, why was that sweater in the boys' department? I mean, like, because it was hairy, right? It was like a hairy mohair sweater. It was a vest. Is that like a mm-hmm. a vest? Yeah, I mean a vest, but like. It was in the boys' department. Like, what boy was wearing? Was that a style to have those hairy vests? I, or I think like, it that's was. what just struck I mean, me is like, what boy was going to be wearing? The- <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Well, yeah. I told you it was unusual. I, it was a I know. unusual piece of clothing. I know. So, but yeah. you always think of the boys' department having. I rem- you know when when Ben was born and we would, I go to get him some clothes. And they had all these so much variety and interesting things with for girls, and the boys it was all like navy and brown. Like there was nothing mm. fun really with yeah. boys' clothes, and so that's why I'm like, what boy was going to be wearing that hairy vest? Well, and this was <laughs> I. I wonder if I have any pictures with me wearing it. This was a yeah, it was a if you could- tan kind of a tan brown color, and it had a. I don't think the whole vest was argyle. I don't think the pattern mm. was totally argyle. But it had the it had a thin orange, like thin orange diagonal striping like an argyle. Mm-hmm. I just remember the thin orange stripe. I don't really remember if the whole thing was argyle. Mm-hmm. If it was, it was muted. You know, it was like yeah. a tan and a light brown or something. It wasn't yeah. uh, wild colors. But yeah, it it was it wasn't Maybe. you know totally hairy like my Sunny Bono mm-hmm. jacket. You know, it wasn't like yeah. that. But it was definitely that 
um, you know, I guess I'm, kind of I'm out of touch. Hair. I'm out of touch with what boys were wearing in the sixties. This, well, let's see, when <laughs> would it have been? Or seventies? Probably late. Depending on when I had, it. I think I had it in like mid. We don't have we don't have middle schools here, but or we didn't have middle school where I was. Um, but it would have been like middle school age, maybe mm-hmm. fifth, six, seven, eight, somewhere in there. So it would have been the early seventies. Yeah, yeah. No, I can picture. I can kind of. Yeah, I think it was. I think it could have been like maybe something the monkeys wore. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. I since, since we're on this topic, I remember um, it was very popular for girls when I was in middle school. Well, elementary school, but like late elementary school, yeah. like sixth grade or something. But those crocheted vests, all the girls wanted to cro- like a um, mm. crocheted vest, and it was mm-hmm. like a the just that those granny squares i guess right mm-hmm. and my my aunt made one for my my great aunt made me one of those vests cool and then you'd um, be in style now if you still had it yes and then also do you remember go-go boots oh yeah did you have the white go-go yeah. boots i did not I had have her- any for regular life oh we had white boots for my baton my baton oh too. i had go-go boots and <laughs> White go-go boots that I wore to school because everybody wanted them. And I, my parents bought me a pair, probably at Sears. Mm-hmm. And they were, like, vinyl. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And my and my feet practically rotted off in those things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well. Um, between, you know, nylon socks and mm-hmm. plastic boots, I remember I, I, my mother finally said, you just can't wear them because my feet were, I was getting, like, um. Like athlete's foot yeah, or something, yeah. I think, and all just sitting in that moisture all day long. So I, I she said, you can't wear them. So I it was, I only could wear them like once a week or something. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, yeah. We the had them boots. for we had them for baton for parades and stuff. That mm-hmm. uh, was part of our parade uniform, and mm-hmm. and the the other part of our parade uniform was vinyl, and it was like a cowboy vest with a suede <laughs> as beige cowboy vest with a suede star on it and suede like um edging right Mm -hmm. and then the bottom part of it was these vinyl bloomers 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 pants like bloomers (laughs) they (laughs) they 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 wouldn't like they have no drape or anything right i mean they must have been And, and there's no leg Right, so they're just bloomers. So they like they just. Uh huh. I mean, I maybe I'm not using the right word. They were like underpants. <laughs> they were like the shape of underpants. <laughs> oh my gosh! And and, <laughs> and I re- honestly, this is terrible. This is maybe too much information, but I remember one parade thinking of the you know the the vinyl and the not breathing and the the, the boots. Mm-hmm. But I remember one parade where the edge of the vinyl, the unsewn seam edge, you mm-hmm. know, because my mom made them, right? Mm-hmm. Somebody in the troop made them, and. Most of the girls' par- parents or moms made them, but then there were some moms mm-hmm. that didn't sew. But my mom sewed, so she made ours. But the seam allowance wasn't covered. And I had, mm. oh, my God, the most oh. painful, painful raw area. <laughs> <laughs> Down there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> From marching with the seam edge of this vinyl rubbing on my leg mm-hmm. for the whole parade. It's like, oh, my mm-hmm. God, when I think back on that, yeah. And then we had the white the white boots, and we had cowboy hats. Oh, it was cute. <laughs> <laughs> but painful. <laughs> but very painful. Well, after that one parade, my mom did fix it. She, she I don't know what, mm-hmm. she covered the seam, some, the seam allowance in some way, but, mm-hmm. but yeah. Oh my gosh! I should look for a picture. Oh I should look for a picture. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> to put in the yeah. show notes. I don't know if I'll have time to do that, but <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's funny. No, cute. They were they were cute, but mm. when I think mm-hmm. back, uh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's the end of my um, projects, Marcia. That's why okay. we're talking about so right. much uh, 
so much uh, random other stuff that's not knitting. <laughs> I know. Well, I, hopefully things will start looking up for me and uh, so that uh, we'll have better things to talk about in terms of projects. But anyway, moving along, mm -hmm. let's talk about the stash busting blanket along because that is done. It ended on May 31st and we have winners. Yes. So, so let's just say what the prize is going to be. Okay. We debated a long time about what the prize should be mm -hmm. because we thought of yarn giving people it, but then this was all about stash busting. Right. <laughs> you could look at this both ways. Oh, they didn't want any more yarn because they were working to get rid of yarn out of their stash. Or you could look at it is everybody got rid of this, the, the yarn in their stashes, the, all the stuff they, it was really a stash busting and they need some yarn. Mm -hmm. So we could make up our minds. So we finally decided to go in a completely different direction and everybody, ha um, the winners will receive a pattern of their choice up to $10. So that's going to be the prize and we have five winners. So Kelly, yes, should we list them? Mm -hmm. Let's say who it is. Our first winner is... Michembri, Michelle, and she made the habitation throw. And I really like that pattern. I'm going to, um, I think I might at some point make one of those because it, it turned, they, a lot of people did them and they all turned out really, really nicely. So congratulations, yeah. Yeah. Michelle. Yes. And um, our second winner is Catitude, Cat. And she made the sunburst granny square throw. Yeah, congratulations, Thanks. Kat. She's our uh, yep. Faroe's uh, interpreter. <laughs> yes, yes. Our foreign correspondent. Yes. Um, our third winner is I Heart Books. And she also made a garter squish blanket. It turned out really nicely. I just have mm -hmm. to say that is the best pattern. I, I, I yeah. really think that pattern is so versatile. So, congratulations, I Heart Books. And I didn't say what her real name is. I don't remember if that's because it wasn't there or if I just forgot. But I Heart Books, okay. congratulations. <laughs> and Laura Sue also made a garter squish. And, Kelly, you have a note here. A cursed Romney. <laughs> yes. She, she um, made a post in, the, um, in, in one of the... I think this one was from the discussion board. I drew from both the discussion and the FO thread and to get the winners. And she was using this, what she called the accursed Romney that she was trying to get rid of. Um, but she also uh, knit this during the caregiving and loss of her mother and mm -hmm. talked about how soothing it was to, um, to knit, you know, that garter, garter stitch pattern and to just, Kind of like what you were talking about with uh, the sweater you're doing. You can just knit and knit and knit and not have to really think too much mm -hmm. about it. So, yeah, she got she got rid of a Romney fleece that she'd had forever and had been um, – probably she felt like it was multiplying in her stash because I have that feeling about some of my yarn. Mm -hmm. Like, wait a minute, mm -hmm. I thought you were gone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then our last okay. winner – um, also with the habitation throw is Starwood Knitter. Mm -hmm. So congratulations to Starwood Knitter. And to all the winners, it was a really fun um, along. Yeah, it, it was. Um, it was. I, I, would, uh, I would consider doing another stash busting blanket along next year. Yeah. <laughs> a different pattern, though. Let's get, give, a, give everyone some time to... Uh, yeah. To think to about build up their build up, build their, up their stash <laughs> or go through that their stash and get ideas get get some yeah. creative ideas because honestly when we started this I didn't think I had the right I knew I had stash um, but I didn't think I had the right yarn to make one mm -hmm. and it wasn't until I put it all out and looked at it for a couple of weeks Mm -hmm. um, with different ideas before I thought, oh, I know what I could do. I could combine these and yeah. So, so yeah, we'll, so, we'll definitely have to do that again. It was really fun, yeah. but we'll need to have some time in between to do something other than blankets. Yeah. So, um, as I mentioned before, the, the prize is a pattern of your choice up to $10 and Kelly, we're going to have people contact you yeah uh through through ravelry, ravelry or uh to use at to use mm -hmm. fiberadventures.com the email address um 
Instagram, any of those ways, yeah. just get in touch with me. Yeah. All I need is to know your Ravelry name and what pattern you want. Mm-hmm. And if you're not on Ravelry um, and, and there's a pattern you want that I can get to you some other way, let me know that too. Because I've been able to yeah. do that for some other people. All right. And then um, the summer spin-in is underway. It started June 1st and it goes until September 5th. We've mm-hmm. talked about what we were spinning and um, yeah, yeah the plan I, is just to spin. I put up the thread. So there's a thread in Ravelry and I have a hashtag summer spin in 2022. Okay. So if you want to post your, uh, if you have Instagram and you want to play, <laughs> post on Instagram, go ahead and use the hashtag summer spin in 2022. And there's no, I have no punctuation in that summer spin in there's no dash or anything it's just okay three words summer spin in 2022 and then the other thing black sheep gathering we've talked about mentioned it um during this episode but um just the details black sheep gathering is taking place in albany oregon on from june 24th through the 26th and saturday june 25th we will have a meetup at the trailer mm-hmm. uh, starting uh, around 4, 4.30. Um, and so we'll have some snacks and beverages. And do if you are at the Black Sheep Gathering, we stop by and say hi. Yeah. Um, so I should say, too, Kelly, I did sign up for a class oh, at good. Black Sheep Gathering. Um, you will laugh about this one. I'm going to take a color work. Uh, <laughs> Finally. <laughs> um, so I'm actually excited about that. To hopefully I'll learn some. Yeah, that'll be good. Tips and techniques. So Sounds great. And, uh, and then our last order of business is um, we want to hear from you. So we've done this before where people have been sending us audio recordings uh, about their favorite yarn shops. And um, so... Um, just go to speakpipe.com forward slash to use, and you can leave a message um, up to 90 seconds. So, yeah, and they've been fun, the ones that we've been receiving. Mm-hmm. So Yeah, we haven't received anything in a while. So, um, yeah, mm-hmm. send in your, your information about your favorite local yarn store. And yeah. you can also so. use the voice memo app on your phone and, and email it. Mm-hmm. Um, That'll work, too. I don't think we have anything else. Is there anything else we need to say? No, I think that's it, Marsha. All right. I'm going to let you go. I'm going to go walk the dog now. Okay. He's he's in his usual position while we record. Right, laying flat on the bed. On his back, Mm -hmm. legs splayed, uh, (laughs) sound asleep. He just got groomed yesterday, Mm -hmm. so he's... um, He's got fresh poodle parts, as I say. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway. Okay, we'll talk in two weeks. All right. All righty. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening. To subscribe to the podcast, visit 2usefiberadventures.com. Join us on our adventures on Ravelry and Instagram. I am Better in Motion, and Kelly is 100 Projects. Until next time, we're the 2us. Doing doing our our part part for World Fleece. Fleece.